Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel Blue Lady Couture and welcome to the next instalment of my Halloween 2021 sewing project. Do be sure to check out my first instalments from this series where I've been making a pair of 18th century stays over the last couple of weeks because I can't move on to the next stage of my project until they are done. Obviously they are a foundation garment and I don't have a pair of 18th century stays so I had to make those before I could move on to the, uh, the important bit which is the gown. So for Halloween this year I have decided that I wanted to do a bit of a challenge and embrace some 18th century uh, costume history which is an era I've not really done very much before. I've only really dabbled in it, I've never really looked at it properly but I am super excited to be attempting to make Katrina Von Tassel's gown from the film Sleepy Hollow. I am of course talking about the amazing black and white striped gown that she wears in the finale scene just for a few minutes really but it's a beautiful beautiful gown and it's one of those that's yeah always been in the back of my mind that I've wanted to make so I'm finally embracing it. I'm going to do it. I'm making it. <laughs> So as I said, I have already made the stays because I need those as the, the foundation garment before I can work on the dress. But they are now done, so we are going on with making the dress. Yay! So the first part of the dress I'm going to tackle is uh, the petticoat or the underskirt, uh, which I'm hoping is not going to take too long. It's a fairly basic shape. Um, there's a little bit of kind of 18th century sewing techniques to fit the waistband and things like that um, but in general I'm not expecting it to be anything particularly complicated it's just a two part or two panel skirt back and front uh, pleated onto the waistband and it has um, some ruffles on it as well so on the front we have uh, there's a, t a double tier of, of ruffles and on the back there's a a single but deeper tier of ruffles so yeah so I'm really not expecting it to take too long and it's not too complicated but I think it'll be just a nice way to after she's already sewn <laughs> the stays <laughs> to ease herself into um getting to grips with the dress and uh, we'll worry about the um yeah the the the, the bodice and the <laughs> and the overskirt drapey goodness another day so please excuse the state of this fabric I have literally just got it out of the dryer I have not had a chance to um give it a good iron yet so um yes yeah, so I have pre-washed this fabric this is a uh, a printed uh, striped cotton in black and white um, which I think is just the right width um, of stripe for Katrina's gown <laughs> she knows tumble dryer fluff there so one of the reasons I haven't really tackled this gown before is because I hadn't actually come across an appropriate fabric. Now I know, <laughs> before you all came mad in the comments, I know that the original costume, the stripes were hand painted on, but yeah, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, I'm I'm starting with a striped fabric, and I wish we'll see how that works in terms of the stripes laying right later on. Um, but if they don't lay 100% right, then I mean, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I just want a black and white striped 18th century gown. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, but yes, I finally, after... Yeah, I was just randomly searching for some fabric for another project and I thought, I'm just going to have a quick look, you know, do a quick search as you do for um, for black and white striped fabric. And, um, and this came up. Um, so yeah, and it is perfect. It is 100% cotton. Um, and I say, and it's printed. Um, it's washed pretty well. It's not too heavy. It's not too not too fine and lightweight either. So I think it's going to be really, really good for the job. Now, as I said, I'm not hugely versed in 18th century dressmaking. It is a bit of a new area for me. Um, so I have purchased uh, the American Duchess 18th Century Guide to yes, no, <laughs> the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. Um, which has loads of details in there about all aspects of making some basic 18th century costumes um, including a, a petticoat or underskirt um, so that'll be useful just for kind of making sure I get some of the, the techniques and kind of the measurements right 
um, and I shall also be alongside that I'm going to be using uh, my patterns of fashion book which this is one of the oldest um, books in my collection this is one of the first books that I ever bought um, when I was going down my costuming and sewing journey um, so I've had this a few years so it's a little bit dogged um, but yes I'm going to be using this to draft the pattern for the uh, the bodice and the overskirts but as I said the the, uh, the petticoat isn't terribly complicated it's just two rectangular pieces of fabric uh, with some uh, ruffled flounces on it so I'm going to sort out this fabric um, mess that I have here. Look at this. I just hate that when it comes out like the dryer like that. Ugh. So yeah, so I need to sort that out and um, yeah, crack on with some sewing. Okay, so I've just cut the front panel out. Um, one of the things I realised when I ordered this fabric, or after I'd ordered this fabric, is that the stripes actually run horizontally across the salvage, not vertically down the length. And obviously on the Katrina dress, um, the stripes all run vertically. Um, so basically I've just got to have had to just rework out um, my mask. Because normally I would just cut um, the panels off to the width of the fabric, um, which on a 60 inch wide you know, bolt is. Um, is absolutely fine and that's the recommended um, width that American Duchess actually recommends uh, to get the right width hem for your petticoat so, yeah, so, so two, two 60 inch panels will give you 120 inch hem obviously um, but yeah because <laughs> obviously I can't do that because the stripes are running the wrong way um, I've had to basically fold up the fabric um, along the salvage here um, and just measure 30 inches so on the fold that's 60 inches um, and then I've had to cut the length across the width yeah <laughs> does that make sense <laughs> um but yeah so it just takes a little bit more working out than I does before um it doesn't normally mean that I have this kind of wasted bit off the off the other edge um although I'm hoping I'll be able to get um some of the uh, the ruffle uh, pieces out of that as well. The dresses of that era and the dress that uh, Christina Risi wears as Christina um, appears to be about ankle length so I've measured it to my ankle length which is about 37 inches and then I've allowed um, a, a turn up for the hem as well um, but I've also that's at the centre front um, and I'm lengthening it as I go around the back of the hem um, because you We'll wear over a bustle pad to give it a little bit more volume in the back um, so you just need a little bit more length in the on the, the back hem length um, otherwise it will be too short and it will, it will rise up so yeah so i'm allowing about four inches for that to go over my my bustle pad that i will be using So I'm now just cutting out the uh, ruffle pieces because um, they're going to need to be attached onto the, the base skirt panels before I do up the seams at the side. So looking at the original image of the costume and comparing that to my length measurement, um, I've surmised that the, the single deeper back tier is approximately 18 inches. Um, and then the two uh, ruffles on the front, the bottom ruffle is slightly deeper than the one above it and both of those are a few inches shorter than the, the, the back panel ruffle. So I'm surmising that uh, the bottom ruffle is about seven inches and the one above it six inches and then that still leaves about four inches um, between the top of that the front ruffles and the top of the back ruffles which looks about right um, sort of based on the, the photos of the original costume. The two front ruffles I'm going to get out of the kind of off cuts from where I've cut the, the panels out of the, the width of this fabric. Um, at its narrowest here I've got 17 inches just over plus the salvage to play with which gives me plenty enough to get um, a six inch and a seven inch ruffle out well I'm going to cut them to seven inches and eight inches so then I've got half an inch each side for um, seam allowance and a uh, hem turn up as well. So 
because the ripples are gathered up, I'm using the essentially the, the double width of the, the two panels. Um, so each ruffle is going to be 120 uh, wide in total, and obviously that'll be gathered down to fit on the 60 inch panel. And that should give a nice amount of volume. So for the back panel, I have made it complicated. <laughs> um, so again, I folded the fabric in half. Um, I've measured the 18 inch depth of the ruffle there. Uh, then I've measured it this way, 30 inches, because um, there's a double layer there. Obviously that will create the 60 inches for one panel width but I need to obviously double that essentially um, because the ruffle is going to be gathered from this excess bit that I've got left here um, I can get another 18 inch piece 30 inches wide out of there as well so it won't be as tightly gathered as the ruffles on the front but as I think looking at the dress that doesn't look far off what has happened there. And to me, that just means I'm getting that back panel out of um, a nice tidy block of fabric rather than having to waste fabric um, by cutting extra odd bits of length out of the fabric that I've got. Um, I'd rather save as much fabric as I can for the, the, the bodice and the, uh, the overskirt sections. So this just seems the least wasteful way of using the fabric that I have. Excellent. I like it when the plan works out. <laughs> ruffle pinned in place obviously it's kind of pinned on upside down at the moment so when I take the pins out it will drop down um, and then you won't see the overlocking or the gathering stitches on the outside of the dress um, because although I'm not doing this authentic 18th century obviously 18th century gowns would have been completely hand stitched they the sewing machine hadn't been invented at that point um but yeah i'm not a hand sewing <laughs> cam not on this occasion not just for halloween um so yeah so this is going to be a hands hand stitch no it's not going to be hand stitch this is going to be machine stitched for the most part <laughs> We are currently out location scouting for our potential Halloween shoot. We are looking for a tree <laughs> to act as the Sleepy Hollow tree. We have found one contender so far. We shall keep on the search and hopefully get some nice autumnal footage as well. Inaccessible bridge. Oh yeah. Oh, that's spooky. <laughs> Wait, no, that's a bit Pennywise. Thank you. 
Because that sun is so hot. That is a very cool tree though. Sunglasses. I mean, I guess the other thing is, is obviously we come down here like dressed normally and then we get dressed here. mostly yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can hear something buzzing. Oh no. We're I, think gonna... all the way. I think they're in this tree, but I think they're way at the top. Nice. Got... Everyone's got a bloody camera or a dog. <laughs> You'd also like to know there's mosquitoes here. Oh, lovely. Yeah, there is. Probably inevitable. <laughs> and that could be what you're listening to. Oh, yeah, possibly actually. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look at that. That's cool. That is very cool. It shows up really well on the camera. Yeah, I mean, it's because you've got the lighting coming through the trees. Yeah. It, well, that's gonna, it's kind of it's it's hot, like. If there's a lot of sunshine, yeah, it will stop it from being too harsh as well. Yeah, but the sun will be over there. So this is the the gold standard. If we can find anything yeah. to beat this, we'll be doing really well. Is this going to be one of those photo shoots where I have to wear wellies underneath my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the silhouette this way is actually very cool, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah, so we came looking for trees um, and we fell into the delicatessen and somewhere. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, look, look at the meringue. Around. Yeah. Oh, and what else did we find? Iron brew cordial people. Amazing. Noms. Oh yes, right, let's go find some trees. seen again. Alright, so I now have my two panels completed, um, the front and the back panel. So the back panel here has the, uh, the single deep ruffle on it and then this is the front panel which has the two tiers of ruffles on it, uh, one slightly longer than the other. Um, so the next stage is to attach uh, these together. Um, so it's very straightforward a two-part skirt or petticoat as it's known in the 18th century. Um, so what I need to do is run an, the overlocker um, 
yes, that very 18th century technique of overlocking uh, down the side of the of the panels. Um, you can see where the seam allowance will be. Um, because of the way I had to cut the panels, instead of using the full width of the uh, the, the fabric from salvage to salvage, which would have that nice re ready finished edge on it, um, which is how they would have made them in the 18th century. And by using the full width of the fabric with the finished edge, they didn't need to worry about finishing the edges on, on fabric like that because they wouldn't have cut it. Um, but because I had to cut the fabric the opposite way to the, to the salvages, um, it means that I have to, I need to finish this edge off so it doesn't fray. Um, and it also means that show you on here sorry i don't know it's stripes on stripes so i do apologize if it doesn't show very well um but obviously this is the uh, the ruffle and this is the the base uh, layer of the panel um by overlocking down that edge um i will attach the ruffle down that length as well and then again it will get caught into the the side seam yeah so i need to put those together now i just want to have a quick check in my book that i am using the 18th century Guide, the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. I will get the title of this book right um, because it just explains how deep I need to leave the openings on the side panels. Um, because if you're not familiar with 18th century petticoats, um, they fasten slightly different to, um, to a modern skirt essentially. Um, there is essentially a, how many times I can say essentially? Essentially there is an opening on each side of the, the side panels and the way the gown, the, the petticoat fastens around the waist is to um, tie from, but the back panel ties around to the front and then the front panel comes up and ties around at the back. Um, it'll make more sense when I can show you on the mannequin when I kind of get to that stage a bit later. Um, yeah, but essentially you yeah you leave a gap at the top of the hips um, to obviously make it easier to get on and off. Um, and it doesn't matter about having a placket or you know any kind of fastenings because it will all be underneath the the overskirt of the the, the, the gown. So that is the two side seams together, and as you can see, I've left a ten inch opening at the top of each side seam to make it easier to get on and off. Um, and ooh, I have to excuse the wrinkling playing on that fabric box. I've not properly pressed this yet, and obviously with this being cotton, it just creases like a bugger every time. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so there is the the bottom of the side seam, and you'll probably notice that the pleat on the back here is a lot higher and doesn't match up with the pleats on the front. But that's fine, it clearly appears to show that in the original film costume, so I'm not too worried about that at all. And most of this is going to be kind of hidden-ish under the, the sort of sweep of the overskirt. Um, but if, if say we do get a flash of the petticoat at the side here, it doesn't add too much because this is what it appears to show. So yeah, so that is the two side seams all done and together. Um, and on the opening um, here, as you can see, I've just um, I've stitched down the around the the edges just to reinforce that, and obviously anchor it across the bottom there as well. So that's just nice and neat. So now the next stage is to mount the petticoat onto the waistband tapes. And I say waistband tapes uh, because in the 18th century they didn't mount their skirts onto waistbands as we do now. Um, they were mounted onto uh, tape uh, which is then tied around the waist to give you a degree of, uh, sort of adjustability. But yeah, so what I need to do, there'll be a tape for the back piece, a tape for the front piece, um, and then this has all got to be pleated onto this band. So that is my next task. Um, so with this just being a two panel skirt, I'm sort of front and back, I'm going to keep it kind of straightforward and just half my waist measurements um, and pleat each half of the, the petticoat down to my half waist measurement. Um, that should be that fairly straightforward. So as you can see, I've already uh, folded the, this, the front panel in half. 
So this is my centre front, which I shall mark a nice ruby pin. I'm going to allow a six inch um, kind of flat section in the front, um, which means a three inches on one side. And then I need to get the rest of this quarter of <laughs> the skirt down into a quarter of my waist measurement, uh, which is seven inches. Yeah, I'm going to have some of that. So I'll catch up with you. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably put in a, uh, a time lapsed kind of montage in here of me peeling this down. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> waistband done now as you can see that is the front panel um, with the very wide box pleat there so it gives a nice flat sort of finish at the very very centre front and then it's pleated uh, with just some simple knife pleats with the pleats going out towards the side and then on the back panel which is here twist it around so it's going the opposite way um, but it means the knife pleats are continuing from the front so they work the way from the side seams towards the centre back then at the centre back there is an inverted box pleat where the knife pleats meet in the middle um, now I'm not too worried that the pleats aren't 100% even I say this is it's going underneath the uh, the, the gown you're not going to see any of this. It's just getting all that volume onto the the waistband, which we have done. And then, obviously, as you can see, I have finished the the waistband with a length of twill tape, uh, which extends nice and wide on both the front and back. And and then the idea is that each of those ties round. Front panel ties around the back, back panel ties around the front. And that's the pedicure. So the last job I have to do is finish the hem.
so try on of the skirt and I'm pretty pleased with it um you may have noticed on the kind of just a few seconds ago in the last bit of footage um I was probably playing around with it a little bit because I kind of felt it was kind of collapsing in at the front and was just kind of bunching up and not sitting kind of flat um now part of that is because I've probably not got an additional petticoat underneath I've literally just thrown this on over my my jeans and uh, it's not so um yeah it just was was collapsing and just didn't seem to be sit, seem to be sitting quite right um so what i've done actually is i've just tucked some extra bits of uh, wadding um onto my hips as you would have said i've, I've got a, a bustle pad on a bum pad on already um but i've just put some extra padding in just a bit more, give me a bit more fullness around this section of my hips rather than just at the back. And actually that has made such a huge difference to how this is sitting. It's sitting much more, more flat at the front uh, and it's just lifted the sides a little bit more to just give that more 18th century shape, I think. Uh, I'm not wearing full panniers under this, but obviously it just goes to show that I probably could get away with wearing bigger panniers under here but I don't think she does in the in the movie costume um it's a much softer kind of and rounder kind of silhouette that she wears I think but maybe that's a good excuse to uh, watch the movie again and just double check what we think she's got on underneath because if I have to run up a pair of panniers I can do that or so I can just very quickly make some uh, additional little bit of hip padding just to go underneath as well which will be perfectly fine but yeah Ah, uh, petticoat! I'm really pleased with that. I love the effect with the the deeper pleat at the back and the short pleats at the front. It just looks spot on for how she how it's worn in the movie and kind of the, the stills that I've seen of of the, the costumes. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So that's the next stage of the Katrina Van Tassel dress done. I can now move on to the more complicated bit, you know, the, well, the, the gown essentially, which is the bodice and the overskirt, which are all kind of attached into, into one. But it's four weeks till our photo shoot and five weeks till Halloween, so... <laughs> um, but yeah, look at my calendar. My calendar's pretty full, so I'm going to need to crack on with getting the rest of the, the dress made. But I'm really pleased with progress so far and it just feels like we're getting somewhere now, so that's obviously really, really exciting. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a massive thumbs up by clicking the little uh, thumbs up icon just below the video. Um, that will really help my channel out and help this video out. Um, you can also follow my links in the description to my Instagram, my Facebook account, uh, also my Ko-fi account if you want to support this channel as well and donate a little bit of money there. And I also now have a red bubble shop so you can buy some Blue Lady Couture branded and designed stationery and giftware such as my time traveller print. Do drop me a comment in the comment section down below as well if you're working on your Halloween projects do let me know what you're going as for Halloween this year I'd love to know. Um, are you doing a Katrina Van Tassel dress? Have you done a Katrina Van Tassel dress before? I'd really again really love to know and any hints and tips you can give me for 18th century sewing. So it is an area that I haven't done very much of before so this is all a little bit of a new area for me a little, a learning some new techniques and styling which is all great fun. If you haven't already, do be sure to check out the previous videos in my Halloween 2021 series where I have made my stays. And if you make sure you subscribe to my channel and you'll get notified when the next part of my series goes out, which will be working on the bodice of the overgown. So with that being said, I will hope to see you in my next video. Take care guys, bye. Well, that was epic timing. So many of the <laughs> That's my parents coming out for a cup of tea. Yeah, that's poo. Don't stand in that poo. Watch the poo. What? Watch the poo. Oh, the poo. The poo. <laughs> Watch the poo, watch the poo, watch the poo.